Hey there guys, Sean Michael here from WinBeta. And welcome back to the... Oh, it, it appears that I'm getting a prompt to up, up do, oh, update. But... I'm so sorry, I should have dealt with this. Oh, don't you just hate it when that happens? Don't you just hate uh, that? Oh, sorry, let me get out of the way. I guess we should update to Windows 10. Zach. We should probably update to Windows 10. Why, uh, haven't, why haven't I done it yet? I have no idea. I don't know. We really cover this. For I am a very silly person. I should update straight away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in any event, welcome, to, welcome back to the Winbeta Podcast, episode 63 for the week of, I'll say uh, April 29th, but we're actually filming it on April 28th because I have something tomorrow night. So does Zach, so we're sorry. For our live listeners, we will be back to our regular time next week. But for this week, thanks for joining us on whatever platform you're listening on. We got stories, we got Redstone. We got Redstone 2. We got Redstone 3, because that's a thing now. Uh, we got a new build. We're gonna talk about what we want on Windows 10. And we got some app updates, surface phone news, all sorts of fun stuff. And you might even get a smartwatch that can actually get notifications that isn't made by Microsoft. So, so that's, that's pretty nice as well. Uh, before we dive into the stories, how are you doing this week, Zach? Not too bad. How are you? I'm good. It is it is a little weird not being live. I'm kind of used to like a comment stream to look for and people tweeting at us in the middle of the show and all that stuff. Yeah, today we, we've gone back to our old UI where it's just our names and Twitter handle on the screen. No well, chat, no anything. Just Should we like pretend that people comment in the middle of the show? <laughs> like, oh, that's a really good idea, you. Sean's, Sean has really nice hair today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Right, that's enough of that. Let's get down to enough the news. Enough time to jump in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, then. Well, we've kind of known some of the details from this story, so it's going to be a bit of a rehash, but there is some new stuff in here, and you got to give credit where credit is due. A lot of this was scooped, and this is from uh, Daniel Rubino. We have an article as well, but honestly, you know, he broke the news, so a lot of this is coming from him. Uh, some good insight on uh, Windows 10 Mobile, where it is, kind of where it stands in the Microsoft. Um, Pantheon, what, what the kind of folks on. Now, this part isn't that new. Um, we've known that Microsoft wasn't focusing on Windows 10 Mobile this year, that they were going to push it off later. We've gotten some, I don't want to say confirmation, because obviously these are reports, but you know, I'm going to trust them, that there are major updates coming and a focus in 2017. But for now, Microsoft isn't very proud of what they're working on in mobile. At least that's my, you know their take and my take is... Um, you know, we, we saw this. When they came out the Lumi 950, 950 XL, people noticed right away. They were like, you even heard what Panos Panay said. He was like, yeah, I've only been on the Lumia team for a few months. And you're like, oh, that, that basically means you weren't very involved in this device, right? Because the majority of it would have been designed before he was even there. There wasn't an ad campaign. All We've talked about that ad infinitum. Or is it ad infinitum? In any event, we've talked about it a lot. So they weren't very proud of that. They're going to be moving forward. They're doing... PC stuff this year, they could obviously continue doing PC stuff, but this will be a big push in 2017. There's going to be what's still being called by us the service phone. Obviously, that could be branded to be something else. That will be coming out reportedly in April. And then there's also going to be a Redstone 2 uh, that's going to bring many um, be features for the PC and mobile. And then there's also um, this kind of new for everyone on the circuit, uh, Redstone 3 that's been mentioned. And um, both Redstone 2 and Redstone 3, as, as Rubino says, are going to be, as, quote, as a quote, are going to be heavily focused on innovation around mobile phones. So we're going to get a big push. And this is what you've been saying all along, isn't it, Zach? Yeah, I've, if you have listened to the podcast pre, prior to this, I have said many times that 2017 is when mobile will come to light. And I wasn't just saying that as a guess. It's what I've been heard, it's what I've been told, what I've just looking at Microsoft and their strategy from the sources, from what they've been doing publicly, it just makes sense for them to focus. Because Mo I've said it, Microsoft has said it themselves. Mobile is a core part of their Windows 10 strategy. It doesn't make sense for them to ignore it or to drop it or to cancel it at any point in the future. It will only get better from here. And with right. Redstone well, 2... As, as more and more companies switch to making universal apps, which we will talk about today, is not happening with some major apps. Hmm. But... Um, <laughs> It'll get to a point. I, I was talking. We were talking. We'll get into the Facebook thing later. But the uh, Facebook for Windows 10 app came out today, and we were chatting in the staff Win Beta hip chat. We were just going back and forth about it. I was saying it really sucks that they didn't use the the, the universal app strategy on that because they're obviously going to focus on Windows 10, as all companies are kind of going to. 
but I was hoping that the mobile would kind of get upgraded like as a side effect. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, well, if they make a universal app and they make it work on Windows 10 and they make it fully featured, then as a side effect, it'll it'll help. And that's kind of, you know, mobile's integral. And I don't think it's going to get any worse. I don't see mobile getting worse pretty much no matter what Microsoft does. They're just going to keep adding features to it, right? Absolutely. And the whole thing with as the mobile apps being a side effect, that would be the case in most circumstances. The only reason just it isn't, Facebook, yeah, yeah cuz Facebook didn't use the universal platform. They used uh, OS Meta or whatever it is they call it, their own technology. So they ported the Android app and or sorry, iOS app. Uh, it's clearly, yeah, the yeah. Instagram one. And it, and it's not universal, so it can't do continuum and stuff, which is why we haven't got a version of messenger on the phone and we'll talk about that in a minute but yeah we will for most anyway, other for, in most other cases that would you would get a universal app that goes along with it so i don't think windows i don't think windows 10 mobile is going to get worse i think it's only going to get flatlined or better um a few details the surface phone is apparently going to be marketed as the most secure phone in the world and the best phone for productivity it's interesting about secure do you think do you think they're going to add like an iris scanner and a fingerprint scanner or something i'd prefer just fingerprint I, I like the idea of a fingerprint scanner on a phone. I, it's cool, the iris thing or whatever, but let's be honest, most people are doing the fingerprint thing these days. It works yeah, pretty well. It's just easier as well. It's like I hold my phone up and stare at it, or you can just press the button and go straight to the home screen. And then also apparently things like uh, Win32 apps, Microsoft is going to try to do something that's going to bring that experience to phone. Obviously, how they implement that is, is kind of on the way. The um, HP Lead X3 is one option, how they're doing it through virtualization. But we'll, we'll kind of see that that over time. I, I mean, I think there's a few options. I mean, re remote desktop is one, though that's obviously kind of a workaround. There are a lot of different ways, but Win32 on a phone is good, would be absolutely amazing, don't you think? Yeah, I've, I mean, Microsoft has said that they would... Have they said it publicly that they're looking into doing something like that? I'm pretty sure they did. They said the future would be... Your phone is your PC and whatever it right. is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but the biggest surprise from this report is the Redstone 3 uh, information because everybody assumed that Microsoft was following the same development pattern that Threshold did with there being a Threshold 1, then a Threshold 2. It would make sense. Redstone's had a Redstone 1 and a Redstone 2, but no. Uh, I've checked my own sources on this. There is, in fact, a Redstone 3 being referenced in internal documents. Now, I'm not entirely sure if it's just like a temporary name before they find a new code name. But then again, code names don't really need to be planned, do they? So Redstone 3 is a thing internally right now. Uh, there was, I, I cannot, nobody knows what's going to be in it. It's way too far ahead for it to, to have any features pinpointed specifically for Redstone 3. But Redstone 2 is now... Uh, in the planning quite quite extensively now i've heard of a few new features uh, that are planned for resto 2 that i cannot talk about yet uh but i will be able to talk about soon uh resto oh, 2 oh don't tease me like that <laughs> the resto 2 maybe push, you tell me offline <laughs> the resto 2 push is very much uh, a hardware and software uh focus it's not uh, the, the reports before that said it, it, Resto 2 has been delayed entirely for folk, uh, for harder reasons. It, there is a big software push with Resto 2 as well. I think I've also said that before, so this isn't really news. But desktop will get lots of lovely treatment, and phone will get lots of lovely treatment with Resto 2. And, of course, with Resto 3, that can only get better. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm really excited for what they're going to do. I, I was thinking about this today. We, we talked about last week about, you know, what makes you stick on, on Windows 10 Mobile. And... Yeah, I really, I know it's a long time to wait and people talk about soon, soon, soon. But there's like, there's vague soon, which is it's going to get better eventually. And then there's specific soon, like these features are coming. I know that they're on the way and it's coming at this date, which just happens to be soon or in some cases not so soon. But you know what I mean? It's not just wishy-washy hoping Windows 10 Mobile is going to get better. Like we have features on the way that you know are coming more than me, and then I know the ones that we've talked about that are coming, that show there is upward momentum. It is going to get better. Yes, absolutely. It's, it can't get worse. Like, Windows 10 Mobile, at least, definitely can't. It hit rock bottom. You can't go lower than rock bottom unless you're digging yeah. into the ground. There, there's this thing that they talk about. Um, it, it generally, it, it refers to collectibles and that sort of thing, but it's got, like, the threshold of no return. Hmm. Or something like that. Basically, the, it, when people sell things... There's points where they kind of, you know, it picks up a bit, and then it goes down. And for it to become really popular again, it has to, like, die, like, mm. completely, and then, it can, and then it skyrockets up in value. Now, that works with collectibles for completely different reasons. For example, people throw them away because they think they're worthless, and then whatever's left is very limited. 
But I think a similar model might actually happen with Windows Phone. It, it kind of came out. It was never really that great. It went up a little bit. It was popular because of Nokia in Europe. And then it just died. And then I think there's, you know, there's the baseline operating system is going to get better. And it's already good enough for some people. So, yeah, I think it's going to I think it's gonna go up. It might not, you know, ever reach iOS. Tell you what, but... that, that, that strategy worked for Doctor Who. <laughs> it went away in the 80s and did a movie in the 90s and did come back to the mid the mid noughties and then it was a hit well i i do think that there's a point where microsoft can almost add do an ad campaign about windows 10 mobiles back and better than ever windows 10 mobile regenerated <laughs> well you, yeah but it, they could really do because if they don't come out with a phone for a year they really could do that i guess they could Back they, and better than you know what I mean. It's, they could have the Lumia 950 <laughs> regenerate into a Surface phone. Mm. <laughs> oh dear! And sometimes I realise why I'm not part of the marketing team at Microsoft, <laughs> and today is one of those moments. Anyway, well, well, that's Redstone two and three, but we did have some Redstone one, also known as the anniversary update. News. Redstone week... one is boring now. <laughs> yeah, but we still had some news on it, so. Uh, yeah, a new build, another new build. It's just a few days after last week's major release. Today, uh, this week's new builders have minor release for mobile and desktop. Uh, build fourteen three three two, mostly bug fixes. It, it was released pretty much entirely for the anniversary bug bash or bash bug. It's bash bash. Uh, <laughs> I think it's bug bash. Bug bash. I said it's not that. Bash bug. No bash. <laughs> <laughs> bug bash um yeah so internally at microsoft when they're building windows they will have a, a bug bash session a week or so where they just uh, they stop developing features and just you know bash bugs there you go it works in that sense uh and uh, now they're inviting insiders to do the same thing so if you're an insider running build 14332 you can launch the feedback hub and see the quests area there are hundreds and hundreds of limited uh time quests that you can complete for microsoft uh, to help squash bugs or find new bugs for microsoft to fix and future builds uh everybody's taking part this is a huge uh thing at microsoft internally that they do all the time so uh it, it's it's a first to have them invite insiders to be part of this experience but uh it also helps make windows 10 a better you know a better place a better operating system to use so uh if you're definitely an insider and you're definitely into the whole feedback thing definitely uh sort out those um sort out Take a look at those quests and stuff. You know, this is, Zach, with, with so few people running Windows 10 Mobile and it being kind of difficult to actually get, you either have to know what you're doing, like you've said, if you have it, you probably know someone that's an insider, mm -hmm. or you had to buy a device that, like, no one bought. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost just like a big beta test, but it's labeled not beta. Yeah, it's like a, it's like the, the smartphone beta test has begun again. Exactly. <laughs> it went away, now it's back. <laughs> Oh dear, my Anyway, goodness. sorry, there's other stuff in this build, I'm sure. Yeah, that, no, there's not really any major features, just like fixes mostly and boring stuff like that, so yay <laughs> for that. that. Uh, well, all right then, I guess we'll move on. That's yeah. kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, I told you, Redstone 1, no longer fun. <laughs> do you think Do you think we'll get anything more fun in the Redstone 1 section? I, I, maybe a couple more small features. I'm not expecting anything huge. Microsoft has announced everything pretty much that's I coming now. I still want to know, there was, um, well, actually, I don't know if this is this week or last week. You know the, the evidence of the handoff feature? Yeah, that's still coming. Was that, was that this week or last week? I mean, we knew about it. Was there, there was a story we had, and it was like more evidence shown because somebody found yeah. like a setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I think, this week. couldn't actually change it. This week, but that was in the last build as well, I think. So. Okay. Um... So is that going to be Redstone 1, then? Yes. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, there's been pretty big features. Well, anyway, um, kind of with Windows 10, we, we, we don't have a ton of, like, news news. We'll get, we'll get into some for a sec. But before we get onto these apps and Facebook and stuff, I um, want to talk a bit about what features you want to have. To me, I, I want to see, first up, in Windows 10 and Windows 10 Mobile, I want to see features unified. We've seen big things like the Settings app, and um, Action Center, notifications, those sorts of things. Those are lining up pretty well. But there's still a few features on Windows 10 or Windows 10 Mobile that aren't back and forth. And I don't want to beat a dead horse because our regular listeners get really tired. I'll just say this one, keyboards. It really bugs me that they work different. And I don't just mean swipey type. Or, you know, obviously that's not the name. But, but <laughs> Swipey type. Um, that's not all I mean. It's just emojis work different, and the keyboards work different, and I, I just wish that they would sort that out. They literally just bought a keyboard company, like for on-screen, like SwiftKey. Sort it out, Microsoft. Like, figure this out. You know. Anyway, 
Um, before I think anything, Zach, what are some things you want to see added to Windows 10 or Windows 10 Mobile? That aren't a couple there of things. Yet? A, a UI change for starters. I want the action center to look the same on both devices. I want my mobile device to have a transparent action center just like it does on desktop. Not only that, I want to see the same live tile sizes on both devices. It's crazy to me why the start menu on Windows 10 has a large tile, whereas the start screen on Windows Phone doesn't. Why is that a thing? It's impossible to match start screens because of this very problem. So, uh, uh, Microsoft... This is this should be wait, a simple wait, thing. So what's your issue? The live tiles are different. Yeah, like you. Oh, because you can have the the four by four. Yeah. but you can't have that on mobile. No, so if you have a four by four on your start menu on desktop, you can't have that on phone. Therefore, you're if you're trying to match your start uh, experiences up, you can't do it. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I don't. Hmm, I don't even know why that's not a thing. Because you might say, oh, it's a bit crowded, but I would say you could turn on your. Um, settings so mine has the the two wide live tiles next to each other yeah and you and so you, and people uh, yeah the text would be a bit smaller but I got a pretty big screen I would love some of those big squares on there because then you get the full featured image and that sort of thing or multiple emails you know the the mail yeah. live tile can have multiple or the calendar one mine's got two appointments right on it right there instead of just one you know it would be nice if the messaging app actually displayed more than one line of text in a text message. <laughs> also, can you have a live tile that like wraps text around? Yeah, I wish that. That's what I'm asking for for the messaging app because it doesn't do that. Right yeah, now. I've seen. I think Tweedium does that. Yeah, most apps do. Just the messaging app doesn't, which is which is made by Microsoft. So which really is made should. by Microsoft. So, hey, well, there you go. There's a couple of things that we think should be together, but aren't. I got one more, and then oh, I'm, yeah. gonna make, I'm gonna make an article on this. Like things. I don't know what do you think. Sam? I might do like I'm thinking about. Pitch an article to Ron, call it Feedback Friday, and I'll pick, like, interesting or trending feedback from the Insider Hub. That's a good idea. Yeah, I might do that. Nobody steal that. That's, like, trademark. <laughs> That's mine. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Ron Official win bait a trademark right here. Yeah, exactly. Feedback Friday. I think that should be a thing that we do, because I was looking through the feedback app yesterday, and I took a few screens. So there's some pretty cool ideas, and it's not just everyone yelling for the same thing. I'll say one more. I want a tall live tile. Bring those back. Yes, bring, bring those, those back. back. They were awesome. They were awesome. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> let's see here. Um, we got a Windows 10 anniversary update story. It, it, reportedly, it's set for July. I don't think that's really news as much as it's just more evidence. Yeah, of... we've we've known since forever that the anniversary update was coming in July. We know just before build that it was coming in July because well, Microsoft said it in in public do documents that it would be version 1607 which is july surprisingly so yeah <laughs> so. i would also say this one zach i think we've known about when the anniversary update was as soon as we knew what it was called yeah because that's how anniversaries work yeah i I'm, I'm not entirely convinced it would be on july 29th that it comes still out close but the month of the anniversary makes perfect sense yes but yeah, look, I started dating Leah in July. We're getting married in July. So when is our anniversary going to be, Zach? June. No! Oh, <laughs> so Damn close. it, I mean, August. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I mean, it is new. Obviously, we like knowing that, but I don't think it's that surprising. Yeah, we knew. <laughs> All right. So, Zach, I know you've had a bit of an up-and-down relationship with Facebook. You know, you only use the Messenger as far as I know, right? Yes. So, but there were some apps that came out this week. There was for Windows 10. Microsoft, uh, Facebook finally introduced its set of Windows 10 apps on the Windows Store. Uh, this was a thing that they promised they'd bring to Windows 10 last year. So it's you know a bit late, but it's finally finally here. Uh, Windows 10, uh, uni uh, I say universal. These aren't universal apps. They're just apps designed for Windows 10. So the Facebook and Facebook Messenger app are for the Windows 10 desktops and tablets, uh, and the new Instagram app is for Windows 10 mobile. Ooh. Right. Yeah. So this is it, it, very confusing. Let's dive into this. Facebook, the main Facebook social app is available for Windows 10 desktops and tablets today and is coming soon for Windows 10 Mobile. The Facebook Messenger app is only available for Windows 10 desktops and tablets today. Microsoft tells me, uh, they, they didn't mention this in the blog post, I asked them specifically about this, they said that a Facebook Messenger app for phone, for Windows 10 Mobile, will be coming at a later date, but there's no like time or anything no, that about that. was added to the blog. It wasn't in the blog. Oh, it was in our post on it. I, I posted about it, okay, yeah, in the, in the blog post about that. Um, and then the Windows 10 Instagram app, is 
Windows 10 Mobile only. I don't believe they're planning to bring that to desktop since it doesn't make sense on desktop. Uh, but yeah, it's available for phone and it's actually really fully featured. It's just like the iOS versions. And all, in fact, all of these apps are pretty featured uh, compared to their rival platforms. So they're kind of all up to par now, which is very nice. And a change for Windows phone users, at least, who usually get left with an app that's outdated for four years. Yeah, so so I mean, I, I'm... I like live on social media, I, as, as many of our, uh, us do these days. I use Facebook all the time. I'm, I'm excited for this app because it shows that Facebook is willing to do things involving Windows 10. So I'm going to go through like the positives first because I, you know, I get to be a little ranty person. I have negatives I'll get to, but let, let me get to the positives. It looks pretty good. Um, it has, like you said, a lot of the features. Like I'm, um, I'm a page admin for my team, and it's very easy to. It's not limited. Like, oh, like on a phone app, sometimes managing pages, um, something fell over. Um, <laughs> could be, could be difficult. People have made dedicated apps for that. No, this works really well. It's got nice icons. Um, I haven't used the iOS version. I'm gonna guess that this looks pretty much like it. Um, so yeah, it, it looks really nice. It, it lays out. I don't think it looks quite as good as the browser, but it, it does look nice. Um, I'm glad that they're bringing Messenger to Windows 10. I hope that the Messenger app for Windows 10 Mobile doesn't drain battery like the one for Windows Phone 8.1, because mm. it's a real battery hog. I just want the Messenger app on Windows 10 Mobile to scale correctly. Because right does, now it doesn't, because it's an 8.1. Does it not scale for you? Uh, well, if you you know how you can change the DPI? Oh, yeah. If you turn it down low, which I like to do on my phone, because I like to have as much content on screen as possible, uh, the 8.1 apps don't change with this, so they still display in their stupidly full-size, really big text, awful. And um, <clears throat> like you can't swipe down the the, the, um, the the navigation bar because it's all stuck there and stuff. Uh, if they can just get the... Uh, the scaling working that's all i want <laughs> and and actionable notifications yeah see that's what i was going to talk about um because these are ios ports but they're not using let me see if i can get instagram open as well uh mine still says beta because i haven't done the update yet but it looks pretty similar um because these are ports on the plus side you get any feature that they're bringing to iOS, there's a good chance that we're going to get it on Windows in terms mm -hmm. of Instagram. Like you said, these are pretty fully featured. So the Instagram app is, I don't want to say identical because I, I don't know Instagram that well, but from what I've read and what people have said, is pretty in line with the iOS version right now, and that's great. But what it doesn't get, or probably won't get at least for a while, are Windows-specific features actionable notifications, you know, like those new beautiful toast menu things that we've seen, Zach? Mm -hmm. You think we're going to get those from these apps? I doubt it. No. Um, so you're probably not going to get, to you know, the big toasts. You're not going to get actionable notifications. Well, for me, for a messaging app, you need actionable notifications. No, I agree entirely. And so... Um, for for both, for PC and for phone, I want to be able to respond to messages without jumping in. I would also say that this pretty beginner, you know, obviously, this is the beginning of an app. Right now, I'm in the Facebook app on my screen here, which you can't see, but just walk you through it. If you, I have a message, but if I click the message, it says, get started with Messenger, and then it wants me to install a, a Messenger. But if I click that, it takes me to the phone version. So hopefully that... <laughs> That'll get fixed over time. Um, let me see here. What else? Why, why do you think they didn't just make this a universal app, Zach? Because it was easy. I don't. You know, I don't. I genuinely don't know. I think it's because Facebook spent all that money on that technology, so you, they might as well use it somewhere, right? <laughs> I guess. But isn't this going to hurt them within a year or two? I have no idea. I genuinely have no idea why they decided to use this technology over the universal technology, which is, would be far better for the Windows platform, except Facebook isn't looking at it like that. It's looking at using its own technology uh, and spending the least amount of money possible and, you know, just getting an app that works for general consumers. And again, mobile wasn't the focus here for any of this, minus the Instagram app, which I think they only ported just to test if the technology works. Problem. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. On mobile, I think on phone, on it, Windows 10, that is. It's a good thing that they did it, because Facebook obviously has hundreds of millions. Has it passed a billion users yet? Yes, I think so. Yeah. So, you know, about one-seventh of the planet uses Facebook. 
So, or at least, you know, some people have duplicates or whatever, but you know what I'm saying. There's a billion users, Facebook, uh, Instagram, very popular as well. Um, if a company like Facebook with the profile of Facebook makes apps for Windows 10 and Windows 10 Mobile using porting tools, then smaller companies will start seeing, you know, I saw, um, like, Engadget covers general tech news. Sometimes they cover Windows 10, but they don't cover, like, every little bit. Like, we cover very small things that a lot of people don't care about. But Engadget, I think, mentioned the Facebook app today. Wow. And so that, I, I'm pretty sure they did. I mean, don't quote, but I'm pretty sure I saw that on Twitter, which shows to me that someone else who just is into tech is going to see that, and they might use the, you know, the, oh, well, what porting tools are available for me? Oh, Universal App Platform this, or, or um, Islandwood that. And that, that might help them. So I'd rather have apps on the Windows Store missing Windows specific features than not on the store at all. Mm. But with a company like Facebook, with how much money they have, I, I would like to see Windows specific features. No, I, I, it would be very, very nice. Maybe with Redstone 3, uh, developers will finally start looking at Windows properly. <laughs> like here's a few things that you just won't get unless they start making it more Windows specific. Dark theme? Mm. Redstone 1 is coming, with, is coming with a universal dark theme switch, right? Mm -hmm. But apps have to support it. Yes, they have to tap into the, the switch. So I don't think you would get that on this app. No, uh, most Windows, most universal apps will, because if they support Windows 10 Mobile, they, they usually have a light dark mode. And right, that's when what that I mean. comes to desktop, then it works on desktop as well. But when you don't do it that way, this desktop app is probably not going to get dark theme, at least for a while. Mm. And it still doesn't support live. Live? Still doesn't oh, support yeah, live, Zach. Yeah. It does support live tiles, though. They That's do. true. All three do, I believe. It's, it supports on my start menu. It has the options for sizes. This is just for the Windows 10 version. Small and medium. Does not support wide or <laughs> large. Good so effort, Facebook. It supports, it supports live tiles. Oh, man. Like, it's better than nothing again, but I want it more. So good start. Keep going. Yeah, now we won't get another update for a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they'll probably keep it up. If it's in line with some sort of iOS thing, they'll probably update it when they update iOS, right? <laughs> I have no idea how it works. I would hope so. There's and probably I... some guy at Facebook now that's going to make a lot of money just, like, recompiling things. Yeah. Because then Press... they have a tool. Drag and drop. <laughs> I'm sure it's more... But because they spent millions of dollars or whatever investing in this technology... They've probably made it much easier. Yeah. Do you reckon Mark Zuckerberg actually took a look at these apps before they went out? I, I don't know. I mean... I don't think he did. <laughs> well, he probably has a PC. <laughs> I don't think he does. <coughs> Excuse me. Does <coughs> he only have Mac? I think he looks like a Mac person. Oh, is he? He looks like an Apple guy. Mm, I don't know. I bet you somebody had to have a PC. I'm not saying he has a Windows phone, but I, I bet say, you had a PC. I say that. He, he, he did bring out Facebook Home, which was an Android device. See? But I failed, so I don't know if he uses that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't know. It looks all right. I think this would look. It's it's good on a tablet. It's very touch, very touch optimized. Yes. So there's that. All right then. So Zach, there's a thing this week. You kind of said it's probably a non-story, so I'm I'm just briefly gonna run through it. In build fourteen three two two, um. We had someone on Reddit, but then we did the same thing, opened up the contact support app, and it actually listed their phone as a Surface. It says, my Surface. I, I'm not convinced this is what people think it is. Bas the, the contacts app is pretty much... Uh, actually, let me open it here. Contact, contact, contact support. What do I get? What are the options that pop up? Give it a sec to load. I get accounts and billings and services and apps. What came up on that screenshot? It, it, the account billing, services and apps, and my Surface, right? Yep. I, I'm not I, sure. I mean, Windows Phone, I'm, I'm pretty sure Microsoft has already said the phone division is being moved in, in under the same team anyway, right? Well, Panos Panay is in charge of all Microsoft. Right. Exactly. So it doesn't. It's not a surprise that this is a thing. This has been in, Microsoft has had phones under the Surface team, air quotes. Uh, since uh, last year. <laughs> I, I just think people like seeing the word Surface on their phone. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. That's Hooray. My, I can now get official Surface support for my Lumia. 
What that means is your Lumi 950 is a Surface Phone. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. No? No. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Um, let's see here. Ugh, a lot of stories for me in a row. We have a poll this week, Zach. Hooray. Yeah, I know you love polls. No, no, no. <laughs> um, let, let's talk about something first, and then we'll do the poll. So you saw that Dropbox. Um, they have their version of placeholders now. Did you see that? Their project in Infinite. Yes. My question to you, Zach, why can Dropbox figure out placeholders, but Microsoft can't? Because Microsoft, somehow, somebody convinced Microsoft that placeholders were confusing, which is why they took them away. Because we did have placeholders originally, and they were working great, and they did exactly what you'd think they'd do as placeholders. And then they disappeared with Windows 10, and Microsoft's excuse, I'm calling it an excuse because there is no way this is real. They said, we did some studying, but basically, I'm paraphrasing, we did some studying and we found that consumers found it confusing, especially when their device was offline. But then make it clear that their device is offline and therefore the placeholder uh, files are placeholders and cannot be accessed unless you're online. It's yeah, not no, wait, hard. Wait a second, Microsoft. I'm going to open up something right now. I'll go into my apps here and I'm going to open up Groove Music. And you know what one of the options is for Groove Music? What's that? You can... Oh, hold on. Let's make sure it doesn't actually play anything. One of the options here, Filter... Available offline streaming only on this device on OneDrive purchased Groove Music Pass. Right. Ah, no, we're not going to play. No, Enya, stop playing. <laughs> okay. Uh, whew, don't want to get sued. So if it's so confusing to have things that are only online right next to things that are um, on your device, why don't they not have that feature on Groove Music, huh? No, I'm okay. right here. I've got hundreds this, of songs. Some are online only and some are on my device. Their excuse is like saying uh, c- consumers found it confusing when they opened up uh, Edge and found that there was no internet connection, so we just preloaded Bing. So every <laughs> time you open a bit, uh, Edge, Bing is ready to go. No, that's just that's stupid. And they're bringing, we, we know Microsoft's already bringing back placeholders, but it's just ridiculous how they got rid of them in the first place. I think it's a joke. If it's that confusing, literally put in the same filter options. Filter, and you just go through, and then some people are like, I only want to see what's on my physical device because I don't want to accidentally download something. That's fine. Just label it. People can figure it out. Yeah. People are pretty tech savvy, Zach. They can figure out something like online or offline. You know what? I'm so surprised by that. I'm not really. Microsoft, get with it. (laughs) Anyway, so because of that... And because the uh, we had a story this week on OneDrive free storage dropping to five gigabytes in July, yeah, um, Microsoft give us Microsoft take it away. <laughs> uh, we did a poll this week on which cloud storage provider do you use, and I was curious. I actually this week I let people select multiple responses and write in their own because I always get complaints that people want more options. So now you get whatever you feel like. Um, <laughs> so the options that are um, pre, pre-selectable OneDrive, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, Mega and then Other which uh, people typed in some things including Zach Drive apparently you <laughs> Who's, who did that? Uh, well it's anonymous yeah, but no, let me see if is. I go to popular answers or popular words I think I have uh, I think one of them is Zach so Jada Cloud that's a real one I think then you got Zach Drive and then you got some other ones there. One person said none, so there you go. At least one person <laughs> said none. Um, so I personally, I use OneDrive for my because it works really seamlessly with my Windows 10 mobile device and my Surface, and then also um, my fiance Leah is on Windows for every device as well. So OneDrive works really well for us. But my sports team uses Dropbox for our shared playbook. Be, and because that because that works on multiple devices and people are more familiar with it, so I use two of these. How about you, Zach? What do you use? I just use OneDrive, 100% OneDrive. I have a terabyte of um, OneDrive storage, and I'm only using about 20 gigabytes. So I, I, it seems to me that based on the comments, it seems like some people use one. They'll use different cloud providers for different things. Really? Yeah. So they will say. Um, I just throw everything on the OneDrive. What was that? I just throw everything on OneDrive. Yeah. My OneDrive so. is so messy, it's just a sad thing. 
I think, um, let's see, one percent. Gavin Greenwald says, one drive for day-to-day -day file access, Backblaze for cloud backups, Amazon S3 for NAS cloud backups, and then some like, like Mega is encrypted. So if, if you want something, you might use that for files that you want to have encrypted. Mm. So there's that. I also think, to be honest, Zach, I bet you some people just use the free storage for every cloud provider and then just use like four of them. Yeah. They probably use like the 15 free gigs on one drive. And then they'll put like the music on there to play on their PC, and then they'll have like the files on Google. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're just anyway. And you can invite all your friends to get Dropbox storage. Yeah. <laughs> I have a ton of Dropbox storage because I invited all my friends. Oh, nice. Anyway, poll results. Uh, almost a thousand votes. Now I don't know if these percentages actually. Do they still add up to a hundred? Yeah, they look like they still add up to a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> OneDrive got 53%. These are rounded, so actually it's rounded to 54%. Dropbox 16%. Then Box is 3, almost 4%. Google Drive, pretty high, higher than Dropbox, lower than OneDrive. Google Drive is almost 18%. Mega is just under 5 and Other is uh, just under 5 So it's a combination of other things, including Zach Drive and iCloud. <laughs> oh, yeah, iCloud's quite a big one. Yeah, obviously from our user base, we're not going to get many iCloud no, yeah. users, but I'm sure it's quite popular. Yes. There's that. Do you think people will switch away from OneDrive because they've lowered the free storage? Do think... I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's built into Windows 10 so like tightly. I don't see why you would, even if there's such a low amount of storage. Like It's just so convenient. You get to Saving documents straight to OneDrive is just amazing. It is, and I love that. And then when you get handoff, too, it's going to get even better. But OneDrive, to me, has got worse and worse when it comes to features over time. Well, you, um, sorry, I was in the middle of a yawn as you were saying that. Um, because you used to have placeholders, which they took away, which meant that my low memory device could effectively have high memory, and that's gone, though I guess that's coming back. And then um, then the amount of free storage got lowered for anyone who didn't click to redeem it. So it's it's gotten worse, not better. Yeah, I, it's, I don't know. I Very no frustrating, because you're right. My, you think Microsoft should be pushing OneDrive as one of their most vital parts of Windows 10. Except they're kind of shrinking it quite a bit. Yeah, well, that's what you get for giving people too much free stuff. That's what you get for putting OneDrive on Windows 10 and having 300 million people use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, even if people were accidentally saving all their files to OneDrive, it's still going to fill up yeah. your servers pretty quick. Oh, well. <sighs> Zach, you have a Microsoft Band too. I do. Do you like getting notifications on it? I do. What, is that the primary thing you use it for? Yes. Ah, well, how would you feel if other smart devices could use a similar notification process other than the Microsoft Band 2? That would be really nice. Oh, then I have news <laughs> for you, Zach. Because uh, apparently GAT support is coming to Windows 10 Mobile, at least reportedly. Uh, so I, I'm going to say GAT, it's G-A-T-T, -T, support, is what enables notifications through phones such as the Fitbit. Fitbit's probably one of the most notable ones, but I, it's very normal. Um, so, let me see. Microsoft, it seems, will bring the support of GAT Server API in upcoming in the upcoming update, which will bring support for notifications on Fitbit devices. It was spotted by, uh, let's see, it was spotted in a user voice forum, which I have read, but it's just a little bit longer winded to say exactly what I was I was saying. Um, anyway, the, the bottom line is that hopefully they'll get the support in pretty soon. And then you can have other smartwatches because, like, Fitbit is open to Windows 10. I think Fitbit has a universal Windows 10 app, and I think it actually does work, you know, on mobile and PC. And I think it actually is like a true universal app. But they're, they're they couldn't give us notifications if they wanted to, right? No, yeah, I, I believe there is a limitation of the platform currently. And so, opening this up, I think that's good. And smartwatches are, are a weird market, Zach. They're kind of like. It's kind of like, you know how you know when spaghetti noodles are done, Zach? You throw yeah. them at the wall, and if they stick, they're done. Mm -hmm. No joke. That's actually, if you don't know this, people, that is how you test if spaghetti <laughs> It sticks to the wall. It's actually done. But in any event, um, that's kind of what smartwatches, they're just billions of smartwatches, it seems like, on the market. And I think people are kind of looking for something. So if you say, well, this Windows 10 mobile thing, what if I built, they don't have a true smartwatch. Someone might say, well, I'll go make a true smartwatch for them, and it might work with, with, with the support. So that's pretty sweet. You know what would be cool? What's that? Surface Watch. 
Ooh, surface watch. What would you want? Would it have a stylus? <laughs> no. It would be more like an Apple Watch because, let's be fair, the Apple Watch is a classy to look looking device. It may not be practical. Apple yeah. Watch really. We would want thin, and it would want just just be comfortable. the The band is not comfortable in any way. No. No, no. I don't find the band or the band too very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's gotten better though, right? Because they they made it a little more flexible. Yeah, the band is definitely better, but it's, I wouldn't call it comfortable. I think they can keep arguing that this movement is natural. Do you find that movement natural? I hold it more. I, I put mine around the actual other way, so that the, the clock face is on top of my wrist. Like I agree that sometimes people, like when you're exercising, like this is kind of a, like you could you if you're typing, this is fine. But to be honest, for like the last eternity, people have used watches like this with their wrist over. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, the band does work that way. Does it? Well, wouldn't the text be sideways? Uh, you t- yeah, I guess you would. Yeah, you so do. you have to like, like, yeah, like, you do. You, I mean, you can, I can read downwards when it's when it's like that, so it's not an issue for me. But still weird. Yeah, people just want to. Excuse me, got the hiccups. People just want a square watch where they can turn their wrist like they do with every other watch they've ever used in their life. Right. And with Windows 10 universal apps and stuff and IoT on the way, just make a smart watch that runs Windows 10 IoT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would make sense. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Zach, it's a bit shorter today, but maybe without live listeners, maybe we just don't have as much to say. Maybe. It's not that short. No, it's like four minutes shorter than usual. Yeah. (laughs) Not that bad. (laughs) All right, then. Well, thanks for listening, guys. This has been... And guys, girls, sorry, everyone that's listening, we really appreciate you joining us. This has been the WinBeta Podcast, episode 63, for the week of April 29th, but again, recorded on April 28th. We'll be live next week, blah, blah, blah. You can find us on all sorts of social media. So you got our Twitter handles below. I don't know which side Zach is on of me, but we're below us. Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Sean underscore Michael underscore UK. And you can find Zach at Zach B underscore. Find Win Beta on Twitter at Win Beta DOT. Or you can find, let's see here, or we're on Facebook. You can look at us on the new Facebook app. We're not on Instagram. We're not on Snapchat. I don't think we're on Hello, Trello, Yik Yak. <laughs> um, yik yak snapchat give a dog a bone we're not on any of those <laughs> but you can find us on the biggest ones I at least think so <laughs> except for snapchat Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot guys we will see you on the next one bye bye <laughs>